CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... G. Marshall, your host for another adventure so strange and so chilling that we dare say you'll get little sleep this night. At the moment, we're in a shabby little storefront studio near the waterfront of a large city. On the dusty window in hand-painted letters are the words, Caro, reader and advisor. Reader and advisor, a comfort to thousands who believe in their powers and a fraud to the thousands who laugh them off as ridiculous. Martha Hawthorne, however, is one of the thousands who believe. And at the moment, she is seeking help for a desperate situation. Well, Carol, it is in this bottle. Do not, under any circumstances, open it until the time comes. Until you are ready to use it. I understand. The effects are not always instantaneous. It takes a while. And it is sometimes unpredictable. I'll take those chances. The idea appeals to me so enormously. It's so perfect. Be careful, Mrs. Hawthorne. I must warn you. When the bottle is opened, be very, very careful. Our mystery drama, Black Widow, was written especially for the Radio Mystery Theater by Bob Juran and stars Robert Dryden and E.V. Juster. It is sponsored in part by Anheuser-Busch Incorporated, Brewers of Budweiser. I'll be back shortly with Act One. Standing up for what you believe is right is both honorable and necessary. And it also can be dangerous, particularly if your adversary has very little scruples and a lot to lose, should you have your way. Such is the case with John Hawthorne, a top-notch mechanic whose father before him took pride in his work, his friends, and his trade union. And John intends to bring back those better days and stand for what his father stood for. Hello. Hello, John. What do you want, Max? I don't like the noises you've been making with the rank and file. You know where I stand? I'm beginning to, yes. It's come to my attention that uh, you're even thinking of running for union president. Not thinking anymore, Max. Am running. That's my job. Why waste your time? You know you can't win. Now I know that damn near the whole membership is fed up with you and that so-called business manager of yours. You see, Max, what I've got that you haven't is the membership on my side. A membership? <laughs> don't act so naive, John. They don't have any say in the union's affairs. You're right there, Max. And that's been the whole trouble. I intend to give this union back to the members. We'll see. Let's talk about it in person. After the meeting next Friday. No, there's no talking to you, Max. We've been trying to talk for two years, but you run things your way, and we're fed up with it. All right, John. Don't get excited. You'll run for president. And see what it gets you. Uh, I wondered when Max would start getting worried. He's not worried, Martha. I am. That makes two of us. I'm proud of your guts, John. But we both know who Max has behind him, and they play rough. I'm not afraid of threats. I'm just worried that maybe I can't carry it off. I still wish you'd reconsider. You have to do what you think is right. I don't want to be a hero's widow, No, no, no. They wouldn't try anything like that. Oh, I expect a little rough stuff, maybe, but I've got my eyes open. 
And I've got my protection, too. Oh, John, is it worth it? What's it going to do to Lillian and me? Nobody's going to get hurt. Except Max Conger. He's never had a serious challenge to his authority. We're a small, independent mechanics union that used to be great until Max Conger and his friends got their claws into us. I know you've been upset about it for months. But let someone else carry the standard. I have to, Martha. My father was shop steward for years, and now me. The guys just look to me to do it. Well, I, I can't say I'm not proud of you. I guess I wouldn't want you any other way. I'm home. Hi, Lillian. Hello, baby. You home for supper? If it's quick, Neil's picking me up at seven. Where are you two heading tonight? <laughs> roller skating, believe it or not. <laughs> We're meeting June and Fred there. Aren't they old for roller skating? I'll get it. Hello? Hello, Mrs. Hawthorne. Hank Thomas here. Oh, yes, Hank. Uh, you want John? If he's not busy. Yeah, I'll take it, Mother. Uh, yeah, Hank. Uh, John, I've got to call a shop steward's meeting tonight. I know it's last minute. Can you make it? You know I can. Well, we're running into a problem at the Campbell shop over in Florence. Uh, we've got things to work out. What's the Campbell shop got to do with us? Well, we're all union brothers. Yeah, and it suits your purpose. Okay, John, I know about your talk with Max a little while ago. When you win the election, you can do things your way. Until then, we'll do it mine, okay? See you at eight. Yeah. Okay, Henry. Hello? Hello, Mrs. Hawthorne. Hank Thomas again. I hope John has left you. Oh, he did, about ten minutes ago. Oh, too bad. I had to postpone that meeting tonight, and I hoped I could catch him. He's on his way to the Union Hall now. Well, I'll uh, see him and send him home. Sorry about the inconvenience. I don't think John will mind. Well, bye, Miss Hawthorne. Goodbye. Good evening, Mrs. Hawthorne. Good evening, Carol. I'm sorry to bother you for reading this late, but I'm terribly worried. I am always at your service, Mrs. Hawthorne. Always. For regular customers who need help from the car. My husband went to a union meeting tonight, and that's part of my problem. Mm. Sit down. Let us see what the cards tell us. These cards are the threat. This is your husband. A red king. That is favorable. A red king will triumph over the situation. Oh, thank you. If. If what? If. The next card is a red jack or a black queen. The ace of spades. Oh, I'm sorry. The ace of spades is death. That is what is in the cards. Oh, dear Lord, I've got to get home. Mrs. Hawthorne, one moment. I haven't time. There is a way. There is a way. You can protect your husband from all harm. Carol, what are you saying? There is... Well, I... I hate the word. A spell. It is costly, but it works. With it, he cannot be harmed. Are you serious? Very. Then for heaven's sake, do it. Give it to me or, or whatever. It will take two days, but it will work. Do it. Well, I will need a bit of his hair and a bit of his skin. His skin? Well, just a tiny shaving. Not even enough to draw blood. And a snip of hair. But... How can I get them without his knowing? That does not matter. Explain it to him. He will agree. Oh, he'll think I'm crazy. Find a way to get them. And get them fast if you value your husband's life. John? It's me, Mother. Well, where'd Dad go? To a shop steward's meeting. But after he left, Hank Thomas called to say it was cancelled... I thought your father would be home long before this. Oh, they probably went for a drink. They usually do. But the meeting was called off. I, I'm so... Mother, so... what is it? You're shaking. Lillian, your father's in danger. Oh, Mother, have you been seeing that Carol person again? I had to. 
I had to know what would happen with this union business. Oh, Dad can handle himself, and you know it. What did your advisor say? You mustn't tell anyone, Lillian. She's going to give me a spell to protect your father. A spell? I don't like seeing you this way. Believing something like this would work. It's, it's voodoo. Or worse, it's not going to protect Dad. It's making a wreck out of you. This union business is making a wreck out of me. If I can find a way to stop it, I will. Well, this isn't the way to stop it. With witches' spells and... I... John forgot his key. Not a word to him about this. Well, how was the... Oh. Uh, Miss Hawthorne? Yes? Lieutenant Carey, 14th Precinct. What's happened? John? What is it, Mother? A uh, police, ma'am. Mr. Hawthorne met with an accident. Oh, no. oh. I'm too late. Well, what happened? A uh, hit and run, apparently. No witnesses. Oh, how bad. Okay. I'm his daughter. Fatal. Oh. I'm sorry. Will you come with me, please? Oh, Mother. Oh, of course. I'll, I'll be outside. Mother, we, we have to go to police headquarters. He's dead. He's dead. And I was too late. My please. It's hard for us. We have to go. Yes. That's my husband. There were no witnesses, you say? Not as far as we know, but... Someone might come forward. There's always a chance someone saw it happen. It was no accident, Lieutenant. If you know something, Miss Hawthorne... My father was challenging the Union authority. And suddenly, he's dead on the street. No witness. Nothing to tie them in with it. Are you making an accusation, Mrs. Hawthorne? Yes. I'm accusing Max Conger and Hank Thomas of murder. Well, that may be impossible to prove. Let's go home, Mother. Home? What's left of home? Now that I'll I... have a car take you back. We'll talk with you both, Miss Hawthorne, when your mother's recovered a little. There's absolutely nothing to link those two men with this case, Miss Hawthorne. I realize that. Well, there's always a chance, as I said, of someone coming forward. Oh, I doubt it. But it would take that, I'm afraid, to pull Mother out of her shock. Could I see her? Perhaps a different face. Of course. Might... Don't be surprised if she just stares at you. But then she might respond. Follow me. Sure. You've uh, had a doctor attend her, I'm sure. Oh, yes, almost every day. Apparently, this happens frequently. He says medication might even make it worse, so he's just waiting for nature. In your mother's case, there's the bitterness. That makes it all the tougher. Mother? Mother? But she's... She's gone. But I thought you said she... She was... hasn't left this room for a week. I talked to her here just an hour before you arrived. We were right downstairs. How could she get by without our seeing her? The back stairs. It's possible, but it, it's not probable. But where would she go? Now, I have to ask this. Did your father have a gun? No. Not that I know of. I've got to use your phone. And fast. <laughs> A tortured mind is prey to a thousand tormenting thoughts. And a grief-stricken widow, embittered by what she believes was the murder of her husband, is prey to a host of sinister motivations. We'll learn what's motivating Martha Hawthorne and to what action when I return shortly with Act Two. Martha Hawthorne has at last been motivated. For a week, 
After her husband was killed in a hit-and-run accident, she sat motionless in her room, harboring the bitterness of suspicion, convinced he was murdered by the men he challenged. But for Martha Hawthorne, there was no way to prove it. Now, dressed entirely in black with a widow's veil, she seeks the help she so desperately wants. Sit down, Mrs. Hawthorne. Well, I was sorry to hear of your husband. We were too late, it seems. They didn't give me a chance to protect him. Are you so certain these men were responsible? I'm certain. Then would not the police be the ones? The police can't do anything. There's no proof, no witnesses. That's why I'm here. I want revenge. If it is in the cards, perhaps. Not the cards. You know what I want. Yes. One that will be as foolproof as theirs. Are you sure? I'm certain. Mrs. Hawthorne, please listen. I have been your advisor for almost three years. You are a gentlewoman. What you are doing now is out of grief and bitterness. Wait. Wait a month. And I then... will not wait. Very well. There is a very effective method. And you would be above suspicion. Exactly what I want. There is some risk to you. That doesn't matter. Come back tomorrow. I shall have it ready. It is in this black bottle. Do not, under any circumstances, open it until the time comes. Until you are ready to use it. I understand. The effects are not instantaneous. It takes a while. And it is sometimes unpredictable. I'll take those chances. The idea appeals to me so enormously. It is so perfect. Be careful, Mrs. Hawthorne. I must warn you. When the bottle is opened, be very, very careful. Martha, come in. I hope I'm not interrupting anything, Max. Of course, Martha. I imagine you're surprised to see me. You're always welcome here, Martha. You know how I felt about John's death. Your flowers were very thoughtful. Hit and run's a cowardly thing. If we can find out who killed John and just left him But there... he's conveniently out of your way now. Wouldn't you say whoever did it did you a favor? Martha, what a thing to say. John was a fine man. But still a threat to you. And your position. We had our differences, yes, but to say that... You don't uh... fool me, Max. Oh, I don't say you were driving the car. But John's death was no accident, and you know it. You arranged it. You're taking chances with that attractive mouth of yours, Martha. What you mean is I'll be next? This is ridiculous, Martha. I wouldn't threaten you. Nor are you. But if a certain piece of evidence I have proves to be right... I'll drop the proof of John's murder right in your lap. What evidence? That's my secret. It's in my garage. You'd know it if you saw it. And it points right to you and Hank Thomas. I don't believe you. That doesn't concern me. I came here, Max, because I want you to know I'm not making wild accusations. When I can prove it, and I know I can, I'll do what's fair and right. Go ahead. You think you can tie me or Hank into this? Go ahead. You're going to be very sorry, though. Oh, no, I'm not, Max. You are. Martha. Hank, Hawthorne's wife was just here, and she knows something. I thought you told me you made it clean. Well, something went wrong. Get in here. We gotta talk. Mother, why can't we have the lights on? And why have you been pacing by that window for an hour? You'll know when it happens, Lillian. 
And I'm pretty sure it will. Well, why don't you tell me? Wait. There. Yes. There they are. Who? Max Conger and Hank Thomas. What? They're heading for the garage. I knew it. Mother, I insist on knowing what's going on. That's it, Max. Ah. Come into my parlor, little flies. I'm ready for you now. I knew you'd prove your guilt. Mother, should I call the police? No. Stay right here by the window. <sighs> Keep watching the garage. Watch everything they do. I'll be back in a few moments. Well, where are you going? Never mind. Just stay here and don't leave the window whatever you do. <laughs> recognize it. She or the daughter's liable to see us. There's nobody home. I've been phoning for an hour. No lights in the house. Well, then, this is crazy, Max. How could she have any evidence? She's working on your nerves. How could she trace it to us? I don't know. And that's what worries me. Flash your light around, but keep it low. Holy. Look at that. Yeah. Looks like a black widow. Uh, they're dangerous. Not if you don't touch them. See? It just sits there. It gives me the creeps. Let's get out of here. Not till I find what I came for. Ah, the spider's gone. Oh, look at everything. What stands out? I don't know, Max. But if you're not leaving, I am. Go, then, and leave me the light. Yeah. Wait. Look. That black widow spider again. It's right in front of the door. It won't attack. At least I don't think so. If you touch one by accident, that's when they fight back. Look at it, though. Takes little steps toward us. It's disappeared again. They don't like the light, I think. They head for dark corners. I got chills just looking at that thing. I'm getting out of here, Max. Okay. There's nothing here. Martha's bluffing. So, Mrs. Hawthorne... It was effective. Very. I'll need another one. Are you sure you want to continue this, Mrs. Hawthorne? Absolutely certain. Very well. I shall have another for you tomorrow. I hope you don't mind my calling on you at home, Max. It's all right, Martha. Come into the study. I've decided not to pursue this any longer, Max. I'm not sure I can make my evidence stick. <laughs> Sit down, Martha. Let's be friends. John and I were. John hated your guts, and you know it. I know for certain that you and Hank killed John. But I'm giving up. You won't be seeing me again, Max. Well, if you want it that way, Martha. But my door is always open to you. Your courtesy doesn't impress me, Max. May I drive you home? No, thanks. It's a lovely night. Well, then, good night, Martha. Goodbye, Max. Be careful, Mrs. Hawthorne. I must warn you, when the bottle is opened, be very, very careful. I'll be careful. Here's to your health, Max. Local 48. Hank? Hello, Max. What's up? I just had a visitor. Martha Hawthorne. Oh? <laughs> She's giving up. She knows she can't prove anything. She's finally admitting it. There's still that nosy detective to deal with. He hasn't got a... Oh! Max? What's the matter? <laughs> Good Lord. Max, what is it? black spider just landed on my desk. A spider? It's... 
It's a black widow. Hit it with the phone. Going up the lamp. Max, you gotta kill it. I, I can't move, Hank. I can't move. It's so hideous. Max, do something. It jumped. It's on my neck. Ah! Get off. Get off. Max. It, Max. It's me. I'm bitten. Max. Oh, get an ambulance. Ah! Mr. Thomas? Yeah. I'm Lieutenant Carey, 14th Precinct. I called on you after John Hawthorne's death. Yes, sir. I'd like some information. So would I. I want to know how Max is. Why don't they tell me? Mr. Conger died ten minutes ago. Max? Dead? I... I was too late. You brought him to the hospital? Yeah, I didn't wait for an ambulance. He was in pain. He was hysterical. This happened at home? Yes, why do you want to know? Well, a Black Widow spider death is relatively rare. Did he say anything on the way to the hospital? No. Where was he when it happened? In his den. He called me from there. And I found him on the floor. Huh. That's unusual. Black Widows rarely come out like that. They generally stay in their dark corners. Well, this one didn't. It was awful hearing Max scream like that. I'll, I'll never forget it. Wait a minute, Lieutenant. What is it? She couldn't have... No. Who? Martha Hawthorne. She visited Max last night. The hit-and-run victim's widow? Yes. Well, you think there's a connection? Well, it's crazy. It's wild. Mrs. Hawthorne accused Max of me of her husband's death. Yeah, I know. Uh, last night, she went to Max and told him she was... Well... Withdrawing the accusation. So? She was there. And then Max... Are you suggesting Mrs. Hawthorne brought a black widow spider into his home? It's impossible. But she was there. I'll have a talk with Mrs. Hawthorne. Since you say she was evidently the last person to see Max Conger alive... <laughs> Back again, Mrs. Hawthorne. Hmm? Well, I read of the man's death in the paper. You think me a murderer, Carol? No, no. I'm an executioner. That man killed my husband. And I'm not quite finished, Carol. I'll need one more. Just one more. Martha Hawthorne is a determined woman, and she's chosen a unique method for disposing of her husband's killers. Untraceable. Who can blame a murder on a spider? But through it all, there's one risk to herself that Martha Hawthorne fails to see. We'll see what it is when I return shortly with Act Three. into my parlor, said the spider to the fly. Tis the prettiest little parlor that you ever did spy. Oh, no, no, said the little fly. To ask me is in vain. For who goes up your winding stair can ne'er come down again. Martha Hawthorne, still bent on avenging her husband's death, has one more victim of her bitterness to dispose of. But the victim is beginning to fear for his life and has suggested to Police Lieutenant Carey that there may be some connection between Martha Hawthorne's visit to Max Conger and Max's subsequent death. How can I help you, Lieutenant Carey? It's about the death of Max Conger. That was dreadful. I make no pretense of liking Max, but I was shocked when I read of his awful death. A spider, oof. Mm -hmm. oof. Uh, Mr. Conger's associate, Mr. Thomas, says you visited him that night. I did, that's true. I told Max I was through accusing him. <laughs> you know the story. Mm, we're still investigating that case, Miss Hawthorne. I'm trying to forget it. Why don't you? No, we don't forget hit and run. But back to the reason for my visit. Yes? 
Uh, I don't know how to say this, but you visited Max Conger, and a short time later, he was bitten by a deadly spider. Do I? No. I don't think I understand you right. Are you suggesting that I had something to do with a spider biting Max Conger? Well, I know it's far-fetched, but we have to take Far-fetched? Care. It's insane. How in the world could I catch one, let alone deliver it to Max Conger? Oh, Lieutenant, this is beyond belief. Ah, but the curious thing is the spider. Black widows don't usually come out and climb up on desks. They stay in the darkness. I know nothing of spider behavior. You're being taken in by Hank Thomas, Lieutenant. He thinks because I accused them that I'm responsible for everything that might happen to them. You're right. Mr. Thomas is oversensitive, and that, coupled with my own curiosity, uh, <laughs> I hope you'll forgive me. I won't trouble you again. I hope not, Lieutenant. I'm finished with the whole business. I'm moving away from here as far as I can. I think you're wise to do that, Mrs. Hawthorne. Bitterness can really eat you up. I know. I've seen it. I don't care what you say, Lieutenant. I'm in danger. Now, Mr. Thomas, Mrs. Hawthorne can't possibly do you any harm. She did it to Max. Why are you so sure Mrs. Hawthorne is out to get you, as you put it? Well, she's a hysterical, bitter woman. And a threat to me. No. Not Miss Hawthorne, Mr. Thomas. But someone is. What? The reason I'm pursuing this is because there is something strange. Two members of the same union meet with accidental deaths within two weeks of each other. There's no one sabotaging the union. John Hawthorne had an accident. His hysterical wife's making waves. Now, if you won't protect me from Martha, I'll set up my own defense. She told me she was forgetting the whole thing. Yeah, she told that to Max Conger. And look what happened to him. There's no way of... Not for you, maybe. But I know different. That spider was no accident. All right, I'll tell you what I'm going to do, Mr. Thomas. I'm going to post a guard at your home and your office. No one, including Mrs. Hawthorne, will be able to approach you. That makes me feel better. But I can't do it indefinitely. It's just until I can make heads or tails out of this whole thing. Good afternoon. I'd like to see Mr. Thomas. I'm sorry. No one's permitted in the office, ma'am. Why, a police guard. Has something happened to Mr. Thomas? Lieutenant Carey's orders. No one's allowed to see Mr. Thomas. He's all right, then? Yes, and Lieutenant Carey intends to keep him that way. But I don't understand. I've known Mr. Thomas for years... I'm Martha Hawthorne. Oh, yeah. Well, uh, sorry, Mrs. Hawthorne, but he said you particularly were to be kept out. I'm very sorry for him. He must be living in terrible fear. Can you imagine anyone being afraid of me? Excuse me. Yes, sir? Oh, it's you. Where's my secretary? She's gone to lunch, sir. Well, when she gets back... I'm going home. Yes, sir. Hank, what's the trouble? Who's out there? It's me, Martha. Leave Martha now. Oh, Hank, please. Hank? Hank? What's he doing in there? You all right, Mr. Thomas? I'm all right. He's moving furniture against the door. Oh, no, it's pitiful to see someone so frightened. There's no danger, Mr. Thomas. Not anymore. I've got the door barricaded. I'll send her away. I'll leave now. There's no Mrs. use... Mrs. To... Hawthorne's leaving now, sir. I feel sorry for him. I really do. So terribly sorry. Be very careful, Mrs. Hawthorne. I must warn you. When the bottle is opened, be very, very careful. So Hank Thomas won't see me. Well, we'll see about that. And now, here's to your health, Hank. Mr. Thomas, Mrs. Hawthorne's gone now. She really gone? Yes, sir. Okay, but don't let her back in. 
Not even in the outer office. Yes, sir. You send my secretary in with you. Mr. Thomas, what's the matter? Get away. Get it away. Oh, Lord. Right. Get out of here. I can't open the door. You've got the furniture against it. He's following me. If I can just force it enough to get it off my back. It's on my back. I can't get it off. Now, hold still, hold still. I'll get it. Good Lord, it's a black widow. You get it off. Get it off. Got it. I'll call an ambulance fast. <laughs> What's the word, Lieutenant? Dead. Heart failure. What's the matter with you, Joe? I put you there to guard him, and bingo, he gets it with you right under his nose. I ought to have your badge. Lieutenant, I swear nobody went into that office. You said Mrs. Hawthorne left shortly before he started screaming? About two minutes. Maybe less. While she was there, in the outer office, did you see her... Take anything from her purse? Oh, not a thing. I can swear to it. She wasn't there more than a minute. He told her to leave. And she never went into his private office? I wouldn't have let her. Your orders. Besides, Mr. Thomas had a chair pushed in front of the door. That's why it took me so long to get to him. I don't understand it. I just don't... Mrs. Hawthorne left the outer office. She went into the hall. Then about two minutes later... Mr. Thomas screamed. That's right. I had to force the door, and there he was with the Black Widow spider on his neck. I slapped it off his neck and killed it with a book. It's more than coincidence this time. I've got to have a talk with Mrs. Hawthorne. Coming. Who is it? Lieutenant Carey. Oh, hello, Lieutenant. Miss Hawthorne, I must speak with your mother right away. Oh, well, she's not here. Did you know she visited Hank Thomas' office this afternoon? No. I got home at six. Mother wasn't here and there wasn't any note. I just assumed she'd gone shopping or something. Hank Thomas died from a heart attack after being bitten by a black widow spider. Oh, my heavens, no. It happened minutes after your mother was there. From what I can learn from my guard, your mother never went near the private office. Well, then... But this right on top of Max Conger, it's just not coincidence anymore. The two men die in the same way shortly after your mother visited them. Oh, this is ghastly, Lieutenant. I, I just can't believe Mother... It is highly improbable, but how do you explain it? I don't know. Look, I'll tell Mother you want to see her the minute she gets home. I like to wait, if you don't mind. Very well. Come on in. I'll get us some coffee. It's not like Mother to be gone so long without phoning. Mm, it's nine o'clock. I... Is there a friend she might have visited? Oh, several. I could call... Yeah, maybe you'd better. Because in ten minutes, I'm going to put out an all points on her. Oh, there she is. Hello, Mother. Oh... No, she's not here. Who? Oh, yes, yes, I know. Urgent? Why? Oh, then Mother hasn't been there today. Yes, I'll have her call you. Who was that? Mother's reader and advisor. Someone named Carol. Well, oh, she's been going to her for years. Oh, uh, one of those spooks? Oh, Mother believes her. Unless she's checked with Caro, she won't... Oh, wait a minute. Oh, dear Lord, I wonder... What is it? Well, when Mother thought Dad was in danger, she told me this Caro was going to give her a spell. A spell? Yes, a, a spell to protect him. I just laughed it off. I mean, advice from the cards is one thing, but... but could this have anything to do with... with the spiders? Where is this Carol? Oh, I don't know exactly. Somewhere near the waterfront, I know that. I'll find her. Welcome. What can Carol do for you? I'm Lieutenant Carey. Police? Now, don't get upset. Just a few questions. 
Uh, Mrs. John Hawthorne is a client of yours? Yes, for several years. But what is the trouble? Has something happened to Mrs. Hawthorne? No. But her daughter says you are going to give Miss Hawthorne a spell to protect her husband? Some believe. Some do not. Did Mrs. Hawthorne ask for another spell? Something involving spiders? Then you know. Two men have died from Black Widow spider bites shortly after Mrs. Hawthorne visited them. When did the second man die? This afternoon. My man killed the spider and we've taken it to the... The spider was killed? Uh, yeah, it's in the lab for study. Oh, no. I want her to be careful. I told her to be careful. Then you did supply Mrs. Hawthorne with deadly spiders? No. But you're saying... I did not give Mrs. Hawthorne spiders. Well, what did you do then? It's obvious that this whole thing started here. She came to me for a deadly weapon, yes. She wanted revenge. And you gave her the spiders? No. I told you I did not. How could an ordinary spider be depended on to do what she asked? Yeah. That's been bothering me. I gave Mrs. Hawthorne a potion. A potion? It was an elixir that caused certain changes in her appearance. Oh, it's a very old formula. Oh, dear God. The spider was killed. I told her to be careful. Lieutenant, you will not see Mrs. Hawthorne again. What are you saying? Must I spell it out, Lieutenant, word for word? The potion for a short period of time actually turned Mrs. Hawthorne into a... Oh, spiders have always given me the chills. They all serve their purpose in the scheme of things, I suppose. But I'm glad they prefer to stay in their dark corners. Most of them, at least. I prefer to give them a wide berth, and I'd suggest you do the same in the future. I might also suggest that you think twice before killing one again. You never can tell. It might just be someone you know. I'll be back shortly. Perhaps you'll sleep tonight after all. Our story was pure fantasy, of course. No one can actually turn into a spider, no matter how potent the potion. But wouldn't it be fun? You wouldn't have to worry about the fuel shortage, the energy crisis, or inflation. Just where your next fly was coming from. It is fun to stretch our imaginations, though, isn't it? And that, of course, is what Radio Mystery Theater is all about. Our cast included Robert Dryden, Evie Juster, Hetty Galen, Jackson Beck, and Dan Ako. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. <laughs> <laughs> 